Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Ryu here. I thought I would get up and talk about a few things that's going on with me here though for right now. Uh, first of all, I thought I would get up and say, Hey, how's everybody doing today? Hope everybody's having a good day today. Um, I'm actually doing okay. Nothing really much is really going around here. Just, you know, just trying to make it through day by day in this really crappy economy when I'm trying my best to look around for work for right now here though every day. So, um, first of all, I thought I would get up and say, um, Yesterday, I did actually get myself a another subscriber, and you know he. I mean, I think the person who kind of subscribed to me is a very eccentric person. They love to ask me a lot of questions about um, certain games, certain you know certain games, certain series. You know, what's my favorite game series of all time? Everything else just though. I don't really mind people ask me that. That's actually you know good thing. You know, good thing to actually have somebody to actually to actually ask me a lot of questions, do stuff like this, and everything here though. To actually have somebody who. I'm not, I don't want to say it looks up to me, but at the same time, just kind of gets up and goes, you know, I like what you do, you know, I like the games you play, this is great, things like this, but, you know, sometimes it, it can go a little bit, it's a tad bit eccentric with how many messages this person sends me every day. Like I said before, not trying to say it's a bad thing or anything, just thought I'll say something real quick there, but the reason why I actually bring this up today for is though, because there's actually a few things I do want to talk about. Now, there was actually a game series I actually did last year. Um, Summon Night Swordcraft Story 1 for the Game Boy Advance, to be example. I mean, as as the game I want you to speak about right now here, though. And sorry if you hear my chair squeaking in the background there. Um, first of all, I thought I would just get up and say, um, I do agree with the person here, though. Summon Night Swordcraft Story 1 is an underrated game. It is very underrated. It's not really widely known around a lot of people because I think, because I believe during the time of it, um, a lot of people either didn't have a Game Boy Advance or not a lot of people play RPGs like I do because RPGs are basically my favorite genre of games to play through. Um, there are, but there are a few exceptions to that rule because there are a few games I don't really like playing the RPG series. Like there's certain tactical games I don't like playing through, and there's some and there's some strategy games, strategy RPG games I don't like playing through as well all that much unless I actually know the strategy. But going back to the topic of Summon Night Swordcraft Story, the first game I actually uploaded last year, um, the person actually wanted me to do a, re do a review of the game. Now, even though I did the game last year and I do know a lot about it here though, um, unfortunately I have to shake my head to say no to that request. The reason why this is though is because um, even though yes, it is an underrated game, yes, I do agree with that here though, there's not really a lot to really say about the series, but instead of giving a review, I'll just give an overview for all the people who don't really know about the series itself. A lot of people never played the game before. Um, I don't really know who actually made the game. I do apologize about that here, though, but um, I don't know what year it came out either. I'm just going to just go through with all the games i played so far. Um, what happened was though, in the Summon Night Swordcraft Story um, series for the Game Boy Advance, there's actually three games in the series. Um, when the first game came out, it was very, you know, it was very wild anticipated. It was a lot of people bought it. Um, it was a very wild anticipated series. A lot of people were waiting for the second game to come. You know, after you know after finishing the first game, a lot of people like myself were waiting for game number two to come out. Um, you know, the first, you know, the first game had a lot of, had a lot of interesting things, um, had nice weapons, the music was awesome, um, the gameplay was great, making weapons in that game was very good, um, a lot of the summon beasts in the game were actually really crazy, like, like, um, sugar in the game, for example, it was actually really, you know, it was actually a really funny game, um, when they actually made the second game, um, they actually took, I mean, some of the um, comedy scenes from the first from the first game and brought it over to the second game. But there was a lot of things in the second game that changed. For example, in the first game, if you ever played the first Summer Night game before, um, when you actually have a um, when you actually make a weapon, as you see there, you have a red a red bar, which basically means your HP, and you have a green bar, which is basically your weapon's durability. Push out some crystals, there's some attacks and stuff like that you can use your summon beast for. Now, the green bar, like I said before, is for your durability. Now, 
in the first in the first game you have unlimited durability it doesn't matter how many times you use a certain weapon um you can basically just um use this weapon as many times as you want to and after you get finished with the battle the weapon will automatically get full you know it'll actually get full durability again so you can fight as many battles as you want to you can grind all you want to and everything was happy hunky dory um you know so it was actually you know a really good genre a really good thing to do um, you know, there was there were certain side quests in the game I missed, it's like um certain weapons, certain things like this. Um, you can get them if you want to. Um, you know, cause some of the side quests pop up kind of like early in the game, and um the way I was, and the reason why I didn't do it for because some cause certain side quests if you don't do them, you cannot progress the storyline unless you do those side quests, which is kind of annoying. That's why I never really actually did those. Um, in the second game, when that came out. Um, the second game because they about because they about to play the first the, the first Summer Night Sword Quest story game and the game was very popular in, over here in the, in America. When the second game came out, the second game wasn't, in my opinion, wasn't as good as the first game was. Um, those um, and then I said for even though it did bring over a lot of the comedy scenes and a lot of the comedic value from the first game, there was a lot of things they changed. One thing they changed was um. Um, durability. Um, in the first game, like I said before, when you actually finish certain um, weapon, when you actually finish certain um, battles, every time you finish a battle, your durability automatically increases back up to full. In this game, in the second game, when you actually um, sit down and you play, I mean, when you play through it, um, after you get finished with a battle, your weapon power doesn't actually increase durability. Also, in the second game, it's really, really hard as on the way here though, to actually gather materials in that game as well. Um, as as I was telling some some friends on on Skype, and as I'm I'm, I'm telling people now, um, in order to get certain materials in the second game, you had to actually break certain weapons, certain people's weapons, in order to actually get newer, um, in order to actually get newer abilities and stuff, um. And so basically, that game. I mean, I mean, it was still an okay game here, though. But they actually made the game a whole lot much more harder than the first game was because not only do you have to, um, inc done. I mean, not only do you have to make more weapons, you also have to, um, increase your durability. I mean, you also have to, um, um, enhance certain weapons in order to make them stronger. Like the final weapon, you basically had to make it so powerful it had to do more damage to the final boss than like 50 points of damage and sometimes it was really hard to pull off so most times when I played the second game when I played it on GBA back in the day when I had my old GBA and even, even when I play on emulator now most times I could play it fine all the way through to get to the final boss and when I get to the final boss I had to cheat the final boss to beat the game in order to do that here though um the third game when they actually brought that out um because the second game wasn't as popular as the first two games were I mean because the second game was kind of um, they kind of added in voice actors. A lot of people like myself wanted to play this, wanted to play Game Three. Unfortunately, Game Three was never released in America. It was only released in Japan only. Um, for right now, the one thing I do know is though I did hear in the past about how there was going to be some people, or there was going to be there was going to be a group that was actually going to um, do a um, translation patch for the third game. And I haven't heard anything else about it besides the fact that it was, um, they only got like the first part of it, like like the first I don't know how many sections translated in English, and the rest of it was still in Japanese. So I don't know. I mean, it's I mean I mean it's kind of like the same thing they did with um, if you ever played the um Game Center CX games on DS, how the when you know what happens is the first game was actually um translated here in America. If you ever heard of the show Game Center CX. With um Game Master Arena or Chief Arena, whatever you want to call him, Kacho Arena, whatever you want to call him, and um because the game wasn't widely known, I mean because because the game wasn't wide um widely known until it was posted on YouTube and a couple of things like this. When they brought over the second game, it was already translated in Japan. It was already translated in Japanese. The second game was. Um, I have actually played a couple of games of that second game in. I mean beforehand, but I mean it's kind of hard unless you're actually looking at a, unless you're actually looking at a walkthrough or you're kind of like trying to figure out the um 
are you, are you looking at a um a um completion listing to kind of see what all the challenges are because the whole game's in Japanese because it wasn't widely known here in America because it wasn't widely known here in America and you know that's kind of messed up here though when I'm saying that now just trying to jump away from subjects though when a certain game comes out but then but then the next game was to come out because um it doesn't widely you know because um certain series or certain games of the series aren't as aren't as popular as the certain as as, as as the next series was so it's kind of messed up how that is and everything here though when you know the next game you get <clears throat> is in Japanese instead of instead of being translated in English when it should be when it should have been brought over here in America in the first place like I said before with Summon Night Sword Crash Story 3 um, so for the person who asked me for that, um, I hope I actually kind of hope that's okay with you. Like I said before, that's just an overview of the game series itself of um, Summer Night Swordcraft Story, and I kind of went with a little sidetracked a little bit with um, talking about um, Game Center and CS on DS. Um, like I said before, I'm not a reviewer; I'm a gamer mostly. Um, with reviewers, reviewers basically just get up. To my opinion, reviewers just get up. They um say their opinion about a certain game. They you know they play a certain game or they say something about a certain series. They actually get up, they play it, and then they sit down, and they talk crap about it nonstop, or they say something good about it, something bad about it. And you'll have a lot of people who kind of get up and say, you know, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, you didn't say this right, you didn't do this, stuff like this. Um, I I kind of consider myself a gamer, LPR. But mostly on the gamer side, LP wise, because, excuse me, because mostly what I like to do is though, I like to play the game through, and then I like to have other people watch what I do, like when I did Mission Impossible for the NES, and I'll go back to that later in a minute, like when I did Mission Impossible for the NES, and um, people would get up and say, um, you know, um, you know, you, you know, co you know, congratulations for doing such a great job. You know, congratulations on sticking through such a hard game. You know, this is, you know, I had, you know, this is the hard game I played back in the day for A, B, C, D, E, F, G reasons because, because for me it makes me feel great because not only do I hear somebody's opinion about the game, I can also offer my opinion as well instead of having to. You know, instead of having to talk all the way through it and then hear people say, this is my final thoughts, this is what I have to say, you know, F you if you have your own opinion, F you for this, F you for that, yada, 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 blah, 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 blah. I mean, I'm not going to say all um, reviewers like that, but some reviewers, I mean, out there in the YouTube world, I said, I'm not trying to pitch y'all off or anything, but some of y'all just say, you know, this is my final thoughts, if you don't like it, F you, have a nice day. Me, I like to listen to people's opinions about certain I like to listen to some people's opinions about certain things. Give my opinion without having to without having to sit there and put my middle finger in your face and just go F you and you know, offer my opinion, get some more information back and you know, get some more info back and advice about why they stop playing and everything else like there. Now, I will say this now, about Mission Impossible and NAS, a lot of people say that game is the is is the is the worst game on the NAS because of how difficult it is. Now, even though that game, yes, it is difficult, and I will admit that it is difficult. It is it is one of the, it it is pretty challenging to get through. Um, it it, it is a difficult. I mean, it is a it isn't a bad game by any means. You know, you know, there's some people out there who need to take the word bad and not equivalent it with difficult. There's some difficult games out there that are good. Like in my opinion, a bad game on the NES that I can say is a bad game and I know is a bad game would be Highlight. Highlight's the worst game I ever seen in my entire life. I have no let me say that again. Ashen fifty two is the worst game I've seen in my entire life. I have never played that game in my life and please for the love of God nobody say, I want you to play this game because I'm not doing it. Mm -mm. Um I mean like I said for I mean like I told like I told some friends of mine in the past, I've never actually played that game in my life and I'm not doing it, no. But I have, I have, I have played Silver Server. I mean, Silver, Silver Server. <laughs> yeah, Silver Server. Oh boy. I mean, Silver Surfer. I have played that game before, and yeah, that game is that that, that game is pretty rough. But Mission Impossible, Mission Impossible is hard, but it's actually fun. I say it that way. I mean, there's certain games out there in my there's certain games out there I can say for right now here though that are bad and that are hard at the same time. But it's that horrible bad factor to them that makes that game terrible. I don't know what to play through. That makes it just like ugh to play through it. But like I said, that's just like my my whole opinion about that here though and everything here though. 
So, you know, so that's basically, you know, all I have to say about Mission Impossible and anything else like this, you know, and, um, you know, why I did that for because there's a lot of people out there who basically said that, um, that game was terrible because of the difficulty. I, I sit there and I go, no, it's, it's, it's a hard game, yeah, but it's not terrible by any means. It's not terrible by any means in my opinion here, though. Um... So the last time I talk about was the last time I talk about before I actually end this video here is though is um I thank everybody for actually coming to the um stream last night. I did actually do a stream last night. I'm sure there's probably somebody out there that's probably like you should you should talk about this, but I'm gonna say this now. Um I did actually do a stream last night. Um I mean I I mean I always I always wanna do them for a long period of time. Uh, I actually seen I mean I actually been to a few streams and I actually wanna give a shot myself. Um I could just see, you know, like anything, it's just something you have to get used to. You have to, you know, you have to keep doing them over and over again and get used to it. Cause, um, I was actually playing um, Steam of the Enemy, one of my favorite games, another one of my favorite games on the um, Game Boy Advance, another underrated game on the Game Boy Advance. And um, at first I was doing okay. I, you know, I was trying my best to um, tell the fellows, all the fellows who were there right now. I mean, all the fellows who were there at the time. I try to tell them, you know. How to play the game? Why was it bad? Why you know you know what's so bad about it? What's so good about it? And I got to the first boss, and I was nervous. And when I get nervous, I start screwing up a little bit. And I was, I mean, I start not a little bit, but when I get nervous, I start messing up my play skills because they start to fade a little bit on me when I get nervous. And um, I started screwing up on the first boss. I kept dying so much and everything. You know, and I sat there like, hey, so. Um, I mean, will I actually play Steam of the Enemy again on the stream? Maybe. I don't know yet, but at the same time, just like, I mean, I just have to, I mean, I just, I just say, you know, this is going to take something that's going to be something, it's going to take some getting used to in order to actually do it a couple, you know, in order to actually do it a few times repeatedly over and 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 over again. And then once I do it enough, I'll get used to it. So then I just walk, I just walk up and make a video just say, hey, I'm doing this this day and Everybody's, you know, people like, yeah, everybody's laughing and having fun and cheering and everything. And everything here, though. I'm sure a lot of people are going, you know, when am I actually going to stream again? I don't know. I have no idea. I just wanted to do that. You know, I just did that because, you know, I haven't really, because, I mean, nobody's really streaming in a while. And I kind of sat there like, man, you know, to break out the monotony some. So I just give it a shot myself. And I, I was I was still, I mean, even, I mean, either right after I got finished with it, I started playing something else. I was still, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad I got through it because I was still, like, a little nervous still, I, you know, because I still sat there like, Ugh. but, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm still kind of glad I had, you know, the fellows to back me up still, so thank, thank, you know, thank you, you guys for backing me up and everything here, though. Um, other than that, that's about it that's going on around here for right now, so, um, if I if I hear anything from any Giants when I head out, I'll let everybody know. And if I ever stream again, which I have no idea, I'll let everybody know. If you know, so um, if you don't if you don't have time to come to one, that's fine. Don't worry about it. I'm not gonna force you to come to something if you don't want to come to it. You know, like I said, like like I said before, it's my policy to not force people to watch something they don't want to watch. That's just my policy. I'm not gonna sit here and say you have to watch this right now. No, that's 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 my policy. That's what I believe in. So. Um, anyway, um, hope everybody enjoyed this, and I'm sorry if I kept talking way too much as I usually do, because I'm sure somebody's probably out there, like, you know, shut the heck up right now, and I'm just like, I'm sorry, and I'll talk to you about it next time then. This is Ryu here. Later.